So have you come across the term empathy map? An empathy map is a powerful tool for helping teams build better user experiences to understand users better. But that doesn't mean that they're perfect and we shouldn't be afraid to adapt them to our particular circumstances. As user experience professionals, we face two significant challenges. Getting our colleagues to really think about the needs of users and then to ensure that they continue to think about them as they go about their day-to-day -day job. Now, there are many techniques for achieving these goals, but one of the more popular ones at the moment seems to be empathy maps. They're faster to create than something like a customer journey map and they're easier to read at a glance. Creating an empathy map is a great workshop exercise and really gets people thinking about the user and their experience. But the final map itself is also a useful tool because it's useful for people to be able to quickly refer back to, a nice reminder about what the user is thinking and feeling. Now, an empathy map is a collaborative tool that teams can use to better understand their customers. And it consists of an image of the customer surrounded by six sections normally. Now, these six sections do vary slightly, but generally they are think and feel. What matters to the user? What occupies their thinking? What worries and aspirations do they have? Here, what are their friends, family and other influencers saying to them that might impact their thinking? C, what things in the, the environment of the user are influencing them? What competition are they seeing? Or what are they seeing friends do, say and do? What is the user's attitude towards others? How do they publicly behave? And how is that behavior changed? Pain, what fears and frustrations or obstacles is the user facing? And gain, what is the user hoping to get? What does success look like to that user? The group draws an outline of the empathy map on a large sheet of paper and work together collaboratively to complete each of the sections using their personal knowledge of the user and any data that they've collected. Now, although I've been using empathy maps for some time, I have to confess, I found them a little frustrating at times. For a start, I found that workshop attendees struggle with some of the sections. For example, there's often overlap between what the user sees and hears. Also, attendees would struggle to express what the user gains from their interaction. In essence, they're really good for kind of general customer segmentation, but, but they're a little bit too generic for the kind of workshops that I do, the kind of workshops that are focused on the user experience and user experience design. The second problem relates to their long-term impact as well. Attendees would go away with, yeah, a better understanding of users, but this didn't really seem to stick with them or influence the wider organization. After the workshop, the effect of an empathy map kind of ended really. In the end, I started adapting the empathy map for my specific needs and circumstances. For a start, I changed some of the segments. Instead of those previous six segments, I went with the following tasks. What tasks are the user trying to complete and what questions do they need answered? Feelings. How is the user feeling about the experience? What matters to them? Influence. What people, things or places um, influence the user and how they act? Pain points. What pain points might the user be experiencing that they're hoping to overcome? Goals. What is the user's ultimate goal? What are they trying to achieve at the end of the day? I found that the results um, from working with this new kind of approach were much better, that attendees found it much simpler to complete in the context of my work and the workshops that I run. Also, the outcome was much more useful in informing the future development that I was involved in. I was also keen that the benefit of the empathy maps didn't end with the workshop itself. So inspired by MailChimp's personas, I turned the empathy maps into posters, posters that could then be displayed around the organization. And that helped to ensure that the user remained in people's minds even as they carried out their day-to-day -day work. Look, don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting for a moment that my approach to empathy mapping is better than the original. My message here is that we need to adapt the tools that we have to work for our own specific circumstances and needs. There are so many tools out there, aren't there? From personas, to empathy maps, to customer journey maps. But we tend to blindly use them. 
I believe instead that we should be adapting them for our circumstances and maybe in the process evolving them so that they actually improve over time.